We do greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Most High God. We thank God for all of you now that are tuned in around the world. Thank God for giving you a mind to tune into this program. We're here to do as we often do, and that's teach God's divine word. Tonight is Wednesday night, and as forestated, we answer emails on Wednesday night to try to help those who are emailing and have questions. Tonight, we have a question here from, uh, I believe is uh, an elder here. And he writes, greetings, Elder Murray. I believe and teach that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. But I'm having difficulty understanding these verses. John 2.19 states, Jesus answered and said unto them, destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it up. Jesus said he would raise up his body. Another scripture said, whom God raised up. If Jesus is not God, how should we understand these verses in context? That is a very good question. Very good question, writer. The writer is asking, scriptures teach in John 2.19, give me that twin. St. John 2.19, how Jesus going to make the statement, destroy this temple. He said in three days he was going to raise it up. And he's referencing other scriptures that states God raised Jesus. So he's asking if Jesus is not God, how are we supposed to understand these verses? Well, brother, let's, let's go to work in the book here. St. John 2.19, what did it say? Jesus answered and said unto them. Jesus answered and said unto them. Destroy this temple. What did he say, brother? Destroy this temple. Jesus said destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up and in three days who gonna raise it up I will raise it up who gonna raise it up I will raise it up what did it say son then said the Jews what did they say 40 and 6 years was this temple in building Jews thought he was talking about the natural building the natural temple but what did it say son and wilt thou rear it up in three days what did he say but he spake of the temple of his body Jesus was talking about his body he said, destroy this temple, destroy this body, and in three days, I'm going to raise it up. Give me Acts, brother, 3 and at verse 13. Give me Acts chapter 3 and at verse 13. What did it say, twin? The God of Abraham. The God of Abraham. And of Isaac. And of Isaac. And of Jacob. And of Jacob. The God of our fathers. The God of our fathers. Have glorified his son, Jesus. He glorified who? His son, Jesus. The God of our fathers glorified his son, Jesus, and what? Whom he delivered up. You know the one you delivered up. And denied him in the presence of Pilate. You denied him in the presence of Pilate? When he was determined to let him go. What did he say, son? But ye denied the Holy One. You denied the Holy One. And the just. And the just. And desired a murderer to be granted unto you. What did he say? And killed the prince of life. You killed the prince of life. Whom God have raised from the dead. Who raised him from the dead? Whom God have raised from the dead. So John 2, 19, Jesus said, destroy this temple in three days. I'm going to raise it up. Bible saying here, God raised him from the dead. Hallelujah to God. Acts 13, brother, verse 29. Acts 13 and at verse 29. And all thy getting, get an understanding. That is a beautiful question, writer. Acts 13, 29. What did it say, son? And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him. When they had fulfilled all that was written of Jesus. They took him down from the tree. They took Jesus down from the tree. And laid him in the sepulchre. Laid him in the grave. But God raised him from the dead. Who raised him? But God raised him from the dead. Who raised Jesus? God raised him from the dead. Jesus said destroy this temple in three days. I'm going to raise it up. The Bible said God raised it up. Which raised it up, Mary? It's just like the scripture said. Hallelujah to God. You see, in order to understand this, you got to understand who God gave power to. Now stay with me. A lot of people think that God did not give all power unto Jesus until after he rose from the dead. Now wait a minute. 
God gave Jesus power before Jesus was even put to death. Jesus was in power. He had, God had already given him power even before he went to the cross. Jesus had power over death before he got to the cross. It's important for you to know that in order to understand this. God gave Jesus power. By God giving Jesus power, Jesus had power to lay his life down. He had power to take it back up again. Well, how did he do that? By the power of God. It was by God's power he did that. Some say, well, God did it. It was done by the power of God. Some say, well, Jesus said, I'm going to raise it again. He did by the power that God gave him. God gave him the power. God gave Jesus this power before he got to the cross. Stay with me now. I said before he got to the cross, he already had this power. Matthew 28, brother, at that verse 18. Let, 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 look at it. Let's get him now after he rose. And then we're going to get him before he rose. Matthew 28 and at verse 18. What did it say, son? And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying. What did Jesus say to the disciples after he rose from the dead? All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Listen. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Jesus is letting them know I got all power. Now, if he got all power, that's power over death as well. But where did he get the power from? God gave it to him. Do you understand? So Jesus is operating by the power that God gave him. God gave him power. So if you see Jesus out doing work, Jesus is doing the work. How is he doing it? By the power that God gave him. Do you understand? God gave him the power and the authority to do what he was doing. So when Jesus said, I, my God, will raise it up in, in three days, he told the truth, I'm raising it up. But how did he do it? By the power God gave him. So when the Bible said God raised him up, is that the truth? Yes, he was raised by the power of God. But God gave that power to Jesus, and he worked with it too, God knows. Amen. Hear me talk. It's important for you to understand that Jesus had his power before he got to the cross. If you can understand that, then it is, it is more easy to understand the scripture. If you can understand the power that God had already given Jesus. Matthew, brother, 11. 27. Matthew 11 and that verse 27. What did it say, twin? All things are delivered unto me of my father. Hold on a minute. Saints, this is before he got, before he get into the cross now. This is before the cross. This is before Jesus been put to death. He said, how many things? All things are delivered unto me of my father. So my father is giving me all things. This is before the cross. My father is giving me all things. St. John chapter 3 and at verse 35. This is before the cross. I'm going to show you the power Jesus had before he rose from the dead. St. John 3 and at verse 35. What did it say, son? The Father loveth the Son. The Father loveth the Son. And hath given all things into his hand. Is that the same thing? The Father do what, twin? The Father loveth the Son. The Father loveth the Son. And hath given all things into his hand. Saints, if he got all things in his hand, he's in control. He's in charge. That's long before he got to the cross. He said, a father have given all things into his hands. He's in charge of everything. Amen. Do you understand? He's in charge of everything. St. John, brother 17. Start at verse 1. St. John 17 and at verse 1. And all thy getting could understand it. John 17 and 1 said what? These words spake Jesus. These words spake Jesus. And lifted up his eyes to heaven and said. He lifted up his eyes to heaven and said what? Father. Father. The hour is come. The hour is come. Glorify thy son. Glorify who? Thy son. Read it son. That thy son also may glorify thee. 
Read it, twin. As thou hast given him power over all flesh. Wait a minute. Gave him power to what? As thou hast given him power over all flesh. Saints. He already had this power. Before he rose from the dead. He already, the father had already given him this power. Jesus had power over death before he even went to the cross. He already had power over death. Now think about it. Now just stay with me. If a man already got power over death, death can't do nothing with him. The only way that man can die, he got to lay down his life. Death can't take it because he's got power over death. Where did he get the power from? God gave it to him. His father gave it to him. Do you understand? He already had power over the death over death before he was put to death. Hallelujah to God. St. John 5, brother. Start at verse 22. St. John chapter 5. And at verse 22. What did it say, twin? For the father judgeth no man. The Bible said, for the father judgeth no man. But have committed all judgment unto the Son. Start at verse 21. What did it say? For as the Father raises up the dead. As the, say, this is long before Jesus going to the cross. This is long before the cross. Long before his death. John 5, 21 said what? For as the Father raiseth up the, up the dead. As the Father raiseth up the dead. And quickeneth, the, and quickeneth them. You know what quickeneth mean? Resurrect, revive, bring back to life. As the Father raises up the dead and quickeneth them, what did it say? Even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. If the Son quickeneth whom he will, in other words, if the Son is able to resurrect from the dead whom he will, he's got power over death. That is before he went to the cross. He already got power over death. Do you get me? He already got power over death. Some say he rose from the dead and he had all he got all power at that time. Let me tell you, he rose from the dead and repeated what he already had a long time ago. And that's all power. He rose from the dead and repeated of the look, he rehearsed what the father had already gave him, and that was power. Amen. He had power with death, my God, man, before he even got to the cross. Hallelujah to God. Amen. Is that the truth, brother? Born king. He was that's right. Bible said he was born king. Look, look at that. Before Jesus went to the cross. Luke 7 and 12. Let me show you. He already had this power over death. Do you remember what Paul called him the son of God with power? Not the son of God that's going to get power. The son of God with power. He already had power. Luke 7 and 12 said, what, twin? Now when he came now to the gate of the city. When Jesus came to the gate of the city? Behold, there was a dead man carried out. Uh, uh, what kind of man? There was a dead man carried out. A dead man was carried out? The only son of his mother. The only son of his mother. And she was a widow. And she was a widow. And what happened? And much people of the city was with her. Much people of the city was with that woman. And what happened? And when the Lord saw her. When the Lord saw her. He had compassion on her. And what happened? And said unto her, What is that? Weep not. Don't cry. And he came and touched the buyer. Look, the buyer, that's the coffin that her son was in. He came and touched the buyer, and what happened? And they that bare him stood still. And they that was bearing him stood still. And he said, What did he say? Young man. Young man. I say unto thee. I say unto thee. Arise. Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. That's the son of God before he went to the cross, y'all. He already got power over death. He already got power over death before he rose from the dead. In order to understand these verses, writer, in context, you first got to understand the power that Jesus already had. Now just stay with me because I'm going to show you he already got this power and when it comes down time for him to die for a man that got power over death to die, he got to humble himself to death because he got power over it. Death can't t touch that man. He got to humble himself. He got to lay down his life because death itself he already got power over it. 
What did it say, son? And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. Hallelujah to God. What did it say, son? And he delivered him to his mother. Jesus delivered him to his mother. All this was before he was put to death on the cross. Say Luke 8 and verse 40, bro. Listen to this. Luke 8 and 40. I just want to show you. Remember St. John 5, 21. As the Father raiseth the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Where did the Son get his power from? God gave it to him. God gave it to him. Hallelujah to God. God gave it to him. What did it say, son? And it came to pass. This is Luke 8 and 4. It came to pass. That when Jesus was returned. Jesus was returned. The people gladly received him. And what happened? For they were all waiting for it. They was all waiting for Jesus. And what happened? And behold, there came a man named Jairus. Listen to this now. A man came to Jesus named Jairus. And what happened? And he was a ruler of the synagogue. This was a ruler. Man of authority of the synagogue. And what happened? And he fell down at Jesus' feet. And what happened, brother? And besought him that he would come into his house. Jairus want Jesus to come to his house? For he had for he had one, one only daughter. He only had one daughter. And what happened? Above 12 years of age. Read it, son. And she lay a dying. Jairus' daughter is dying. Jairus want Jesus to come to his house because his daughter is at home dying. What happened, brother? But as he went, the people thronged him. As Jesus went, the people thronged Jesus. Jairus want Jesus down at his house because his daughter is dying. But the people have thrown Jesus. And what happened? And a woman having an issue of blood 12 you, you, years. Look, look, you, you know the story of the woman with the issue of blood. Jesus got to stop and deal with her. Jairus trying to get Jesus to his house because his daughter is at home dying. What happened, brother? And, and a woman having an issue of blood 12 years. For the sake years. of time, verse 49. Drop down to verse 49. This is after Jesus and the God done dealing with the woman with the issue of blood. Verse 49. What did it say? While he yet spake. While Jesus was talking. There cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house. One came from Jairus' house and said what? Saying to him. What did he say? Thy daughter is dead. You're trying to get Jesus down here, but she done died now. What did he say, brother? Trouble not the master. Don't, don't bother Jesus. Jairus, your daughter done died. What did he say, sir? But when Jesus heard it, when Jesus heard it, he answered him saying, what did he say? Fear not. Don't be afraid. Believe only. Hallelujah to God. Don't be afraid. Just be a believer. What did he say, son? And she shall be made whole. And she shall be made whole. What did he say? And when he came into the house, when he came to the house, he suffered no man to go in. Jesus wouldn't let nobody go in, but who? Say Peter and James and John. Give me Peter, James and John. The rest of y'all stay out of here. What did he say, brother? And the father and the mother of the maiden. Took the father and the mother also. What did he say? And all wept and bewailed her. What did he say, son? But he said. What did he say? Weep not. Don't cry. She is not dead. She's not dead. But sleeping. She's just sleeping. Hallelujah to God. You know, that's, that's amazing. How death to Jesus is equal to somebody else sleep. Ain't that amazing? You, look here. It, it's just that simple to Jesus. You know how you lay down at night and go to sleep and wake up in the morning? Look, death is just that simple to Jesus. She's sleeping. Just like I wake you up in the morning, I can wake her up from the dead. She, it's all right. No big deal. What did he say, brother? And they laughed him to scorn. They laughing at Jesus. Knowing that she was dead. Knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out. He put them all out. Put the laughers out. What is that? And took her by the hand and called, saying. What did he say? May. May. Arise. Arise. And her spirit came again. What a mighty God we serve. Her spirit came again. And what now all this done by Jesus before he went to the cross. What did he say, son? And she arose straightway. She arose straightway. And he commanded to give her meat. Jesus said, give us some meat. Give us some meat. What is that? And her parents were astonished. Her parents were astonished. But he charged them that they should tell no man what was done. He wasn't seeking to make a reputation for himself. Listen, my point is this. Jesus had this power before he went to the cross. Now, if this man got this kind of power over death, where did he get that power from? God gave it to him. God gave it to him. Do you understand? So now, give me St. John 10, brother. 
and at verse 16. St. John chapter 10 and at verse 16. Now watch this. What did it say, son? And of the sheep I have. Jesus said, other sheep that I have. Which are not of this fold. They're not of this fold. Them also I must bring. I must bring them. They're not of this fold. My God, they're not Jews. I got to bring them also. What did he say? And they shall hear my voice. Jesus said, they're going to hear my voice. And there should be one fold and one shepherd. One fold and one shepherd. Therefore doeth my father love me. Oh, hold it. Jesus said, my father loved me. Why? Because I laid down my life. I do what? Because I lay down my life. What did he say, son? That I might take it again. I'm going to lay down my life. Look, this man got power over death. In order for him to die, he got to lay down his life. He got all the folk. Look, we, we just got through reading where he raised folk from the dead. Showing that he's got power over death. And look, I just read a couple. I can go to the 11th chapter of John and get Lazarus. All this was before Jesus went to the cross. What did it say, son? No man taketh it from me. Jesus said, no man take my life from me. What did he say, son? But I lay it down of myself. He said, I lay it down of myself. What did he say? I have power to lay it down. I have what? I have power to lay it down. Saints, where did he get that power from? God gave it to him. His father gave it to him. He said, I have power to lay it down. And, and I have power to take it again. And I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. My father gave me this. You see this power I got to lay my life down and take it again? My father gave it to me. Look, my father gave me this power. Somebody said, well, why did it say God raised him from the dead? Because that's the power of God that he gave Jesus. The power that raised Jesus from the dead is the power of God. God gave it to Jesus. Is that play? God gave it to Jesus. It's the power of God. So if Jesus said, I lay it down, God, he's operating with the power God gave him. God gave him this power. He said, I lay it down and I take it again. But he lets you know where he got the power from. Do you understand? I'm working by the power of God. I got it from the Father. He gave me this command. I can lay it down and I can take it again. He showed that he had the power before he went to the cross by the different ones he was raising from the dead even before he was put to death. That's why the Bible is going to let you know he had to lay his life down. Look, if I got power over death, death can't do nothing with me. I got to humble myself to die. Do you understand? Hear me, hear me now. If I got all this power where well, you can't do nothing with me, in order for you to grab me and lay me down, I got to humble myself. Do you understand? I got to humble myself. Come on, come on, y'all, come on, get it. Come on, come on, Dad, you can get it. I'm, I'm going to lay that. I'm going to let you get it. Do you understand? Hallelujah to God. Is that plain sight? Amen. He said, I have what, brother? No man taketh it from me. No man take it from me. But I lay it down on myself. I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down. I have power to lay it down. And I have power to take it again. And I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. I got this authority. I got this commandment. I got this power from my father. Hallelujah to God. Philippians 22 and that verse 5, brother. Listen to this. Philippians chapter 2 and at verse 5. And all thy getting, get your understanding. Philippians 2 5 said, What? Let this mind be in you. Let this mind be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. Also in who? Christ Jesus. What you say about Christ Jesus? Who being in the form of God. What form was he in? Form of God. What did he say, son? Thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But what did he do? But made himself of no reputation. Wasn't seeking to make a reputation for himself. What did he do, twin? And took upon him the form of a servant. He took upon him the form of a servant. And what happened? And was made in the likeness of men. Jesus was made just like man. What did he say? And being found in fashion as a man. Being found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself. He did what? He humbled himself. Read it, son. And became obedient unto death. You know you got some power when you got to humble yourself. To become obedient to death. Look, look, look. 
You got to humble yourself to become obedient to death. Why? Because you got power over death. So in order for death, my God, to take hold of me, I got to humble myself to let death lay me down. Do you understand? Bible says he did what, twin? But made, but made of himself no reputation. What did he do? And took upon him the form of a servant. And what, did, what happened? And was made in the likeness of men. Read it, brother. And being found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself. And became obedient unto death. Read it. Even the death of the cross. He had to humble himself right unto die because he had power that God gave him. God gave him power and authority over death. So he had to humble himself, my God, man, in order to die. The proof that he had power and authority over death, he was raising folks from the dead even before he was put to death. The next question. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. Romans 8, 9. We know that there is but one spirit. If Jesus is not God, why did Paul use the Spirit of God and the Spirit of Christ seemingly interchangeably? Seem, he says seemingly interchangeably. What he's asking is, if Jesus is not God, he's referencing Paul, give me Romans 8 and 9, he's referencing Paul talking about the Spirit of God, and then, then he may mention the Spirit of Christ. So he said, if Jesus is not God, why is Paul talking like that? He said, we know there's only one spirit, and that is true, brother. It's one spirit. Romans 8 9 said, what? But ye are not in the flesh. But you're not in the flesh? But in the spirit. Read it. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now? Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ. What's the condition? He is none of his. What you say? And if Christ be in you. Then what? The body is dead because of sin. Let me help you, right? There's only one spirit. Why did Paul say the spirit of God and then he say spirit of Christ? Listen, the spirit of Christ, it is the spirit of God. Amen. L listen to me now. Christ simply means anointed one. God is the one who anointed Christ. God is the one who anointed Christ. When the Bible talked about the spirit of Christ, that's talking about the spirit of God. Because God came upon Christ to anoint Christ. Do you understand? It's not two separate spirits. It's talking about God coming upon Christ. And, 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 and Paul referenced the spirit of Christ. The spirit of Christ is the spirit of God. Isaiah 61 and 1, brother. Watch this. Isaiah 61 and 1. Christ simply means the anointed or anointed one. He was the Messiah. He was anointed by God. Brother, watch this. God going to come upon Jesus. God going to come upon Christ and anoint him. Hear me talk. Isaiah 61 and 1 said what? The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. <laughs> Who's upon you? The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Hey, hey, writer. This is prophecy concerning Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. He said, a spirit of who is upon you? The Lord God. If the spirit of God came upon him, when the Bible talked about the spirit of Christ, Christ, look, God is the one who anointed Christ. God is the one who anointed Christ. God is the spirit that came upon Christ. So the spirit of Christ, that is the spirit of God. It's not a separate spirit. It's the spirit of God. God came upon Christ. What did he say, Isaiah 61 and 1? The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And what happened? Because the Lord have anointed me to preach the good tidings. He, he did what I tell you? Anointed me. God anointed Christ. When the Bible talked about the spirit of Christ, that's the spirit of God. God came upon Christ. Do you understand? It ain't two separate spirits. The spirit of Christ, listen, that's the spirit of God. God anointed Christ. Luke 418, brother. Watch Jesus. Now, what we just read in Isaiah 61 and 1, I want you to watch Jesus, let you know that it's fulfilled in him. Luke 4 and at verse 18, what did it say, twin? Verse 17. Start at verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hallelujah to God. Now, we just read, right, Isaiah 61 and 1, where Isaiah prophesied concerning the spirit of God coming upon Christ. 
Now watch Jesus let you know in Luke 4, 17 that he's that one. What did he say, brother? And when he had opened the book. 17 again said what? And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. That was delivered unto Jesus. The book of the prophet Isaiah. And what did it say? And when he had opened the book. When Jesus had opened the book. He found the place where it was written. What did Jesus find, brother? The spirit of the Lord is upon me. The spirit of who is upon you, Jesus? The spirit of the Lord. Look, look, in other words, that's the spirit of God that was upon Jesus. Amen. The spirit of God came upon Jesus. Now, if the spirit of God came upon Jesus, when the Bible talks about the spirit of Christ, that's still talking about the spirit of God. Because the spirit of God is what came upon him. What did it say, son? Because he have anointed me to preach the gospel. He have anointed me to preach the gospel. To the poor. To the poor. He have sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Look, the spirit of Christ is just letting you know the spirit that was in Christ. Amen. The spirit that was in Christ is God. Do you understand? Look, look, I can say I got the spirit of Christ. I can say I got the spirit of God. Do you understand? I'm saying the same thing. Amen. Because the spirit of Christ, that's the spirit of God that was in him. Do you understand? It's the same thing. Only thing Spirit of Christ is saying is letting you know the Spirit that was in Christ. What was in Christ? God was. Remember, Paul said God was in Christ, reconciling the world back unto himself. Amen. What did it say, sir? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me? Because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Now, now remember now, G Jesus got this book. That was delivered unto him, and he done, he, he done flipped over here to Isaiah 61 and 1, and he's reading to the people what was written concerning himself. What did he say, son? He have sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Jesus said he have sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captives. What did he say, son? And recovering of sight to the blind. What did he say, son? To set at liberty, th liberty them that are bruised. Read it. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. What did he say, son? And he closed the book. Hallelujah to God. After Jesus took the book, my God, man, and read that. Bible said he closed the book. And what did Jesus do, brother? And he gave it again to the minister and sat down. Jesus gave the book back to the minister and Jesus sat down. And what happened, brother? And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. They are looking at Jesus. They fastened upon Jesus. Jesus in the fifth over to Isaiah 61 and 1 and read concerning himself. My God closed the book, sat down, gave the book back to the minister, and everybody there watched it. What did he say, brother? And he began to say unto them. What did Jesus say to him? This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. Jesus said, this day is the scripture fulfilled right in your own ears. In other words, y'all looking at the one Isaiah was writing about. Do you understand? What did he say, son? And all bear him witness. All bear him witness? And wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. Read it, son. And they said. What they said? It's not this Joseph's son. <laughs> hey, that Joseph boy. That Joseph boy up there talking like that. Right up. When the Bible talked about the spirit of Christ, it's simply talking about the spirit that was in Christ. The spirit that was in Christ is the spirit of God. God is the one who anointed Christ. So to say spirit of Christ, to say spirit of God, you're saying the same thing. Do you understand? I can say I've got the spirit of Christ because that's the spirit of God. I can say I got the spirit of God. Do you understand? I'm saying the same thing. So you're correct. Paul used it interchangeably. He did because it's dealing with the same thing. Writer, I'm glad to read your, your email how you believe and teach that Jesus is the son of God. I say to you, blessed are your eyes for you see. I thank God when I hear or get emails like this where people are acknowledging the truth. There's a brother, a congregation out of West Virginia, and I, I hope and pray they make anniversary in December. And not that it matters. It's, it's a white minister, white congregation, and, and that don't matter. But it, it, it did my heart good. Last Sunday night, I got home and got a, text from, uh, from the minister and he said to me how that they had corrected their errors with sonship dealing with the son of God and how they are looking to receive I believe according to his letter he said the right hand of fellowship let me tell you something 
It takes honesty. It takes a heart that God is truly dealing with for a minister to acknowledge that they have error and they have corrected their errors. When that brother texts me that, I text him back, let him know how grateful to God I am for him. I don't get text messages like that quite often. Men today, I often say they got this disease called pride. And it's almost like they would rather take a swine dive right in hell before they change what they done said. But let, 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 me, let, me, let me testify. This preacher here, used to preach the same thing or teach the same thing years past, no son of God, because that's what my teachers told me coming up. But just like God stopped Saul on that Damascus road and revealed his son in him, God stopped this preacher. I wasn't on Damascus road, I was on McLeod road. That's where I live. God got a hold to me in my day room and God revealed his son in me that I may preach him amongst the heathen. And let me tell y'all something. A lot of people talked about, you know, mystery and revelation, this, that, and the other. And, and, and we're going to get into mystery and revelation. There's a message God got down in me dealing with mystery and revelation. It's got to come out at some point. But I, I want you to hear me well. Men today talking about you know, mystery and revelation. They got a revelation this, revelation that. And then their revelation, you can't read nowhere in the book. When God revealed his son in me, God showed me that this stuff been in the book the whole time. We just were reading right over it. Look, I didn't have to go search another man's book. The Lord took that book, that Bible right there and took this preacher right in his day room and started counseling with him and walking me through the scripture. Showing me that his son is alive. And stop saying my son don't live. Let me tell you. Men have hit the ceiling from this teaching. They have hit the ceiling. But the proof that it came from God. You can read it. Throughout the Bible. And look. Can't no man do nothing with it. They mad. They huffing. They puffing. They calling, they leaving all their messages. But ain't it amazing? Can't nobody do nothing with it? <laughs> ain't that amazing? Can't do nothing with it? Can't touch it. Do you understand? Can't touch it because it's written in the book. And if it's written in the book, I, I, I get David declared uh, forever, O oh Lord. Thy word is settled in heaven forever. Many have changed their teachings. I thank God for the many brothers who have confessed and acknowledged we just erred. We just erred. And this is not just an error, you know, whereby you can just, okay, no big deal. It is a big deal. Because everything is hanging on your belief in the Son of God, Jesus Christ. If you ain't got that right, nothing else matters. We thank God for your watching. To the writer, I hope your questions all were, were answered. If you need further explanation, please email me back. Good hearing from you. Hope to get a chance to meet you at some point. I have no idea who you are. But until next time, God bless you and peace be unto you.